Hello, Booktube. This is a bookshelf tour, the tenth bookcase, uh, continuation of the Russian books, and it's um, it's on the fourth shelf of that bookcase. So we'll begin with the Young Pushkin, a novel. Uh, this is by Yuri Tinyanov, translated from the Russian by Anna Kirkina Rush and Christopher Rush. It was um, published in 2008. Uh, by the Rookery Press um, in um, New York. And Young Pushkin was first published in serial form between 1935 and 1943 and immediately achieved classic stas status in Russia. Although the author did not live to accomplish his full epic scheme, quote, on the origins, development, and death of our national poet, end quote, he did complete the first part, his fictional masterpiece of Pushkin's early years, this is the first English translation. Then we'll go to Alexander Herzen, My Past and Thoughts, with an introduction by Isaiah Berlin. It's abridged by Dwight MacDonald and translated by Constant Garnet. A name familiar as a translator for people who read a lot of Russian literature. And then we have Leo Tolstoy's Anna Karenina. Again, this time. Uh, translated from the Russian by Constant Garnett. A very famous novel. This one was uh, the Bob's Merrill Company Incorporated, Indianapolis, New York. And this was uh, published, the first printing from, let's see if they even have a date on here. Wow, they do not. That's something, no date. So, ND. Unless I'm looking right at it and missing it. usually expect them to have something but and then moving right along for more Tolstoy this is Tolstoy the death of Ivan Ilyich and other stories a new translator translation excuse me but Pavirin Belkonsky and it does include uh, let me do this Alfred A. Knopf New York 2009 and uh, it contains my favorite Tolstoy's Tolstoy story, and that's Haji Murat. Then a, a, a fun novel, um, The Last Station, a novel of Tolstoy's final year by Jay Perini. There's a movie um, starring, starring Helen Mirren and Christopher Plummer. Um, let's see, this has got the movie cover. It's just, this was a good Good story. I enjoyed it. I've always liked Jay Perini anyway. And um, this was uh, an anchor book, a division of Random House Incorporated, New York. Copyright was 1990. And this first anchor book's edition was 2009. Then we get into a series. It's a series of books that are a biography. And they're uh, the biography of Dostoevsky. And um, they, they are by Joseph Frank. I've read all but the last one. So uh, Dostoevsky, The Seeds of Revolt, 1821-1849 by Joseph Frank. And this was um, published by Princeton University Press. It's a paperback. Uh, so the paperback is um, from 1976. And it's the second printing, no, it's the first Princeton, Princeton paperback printing of 79. That was a mouthful. Second volume I have is also paper. Dostoevsky, The Years of Ordeal, 1850 to 1859 by Joseph Frank. And this would be, let's see, the fourth printing of 1990. And it's Princeton University and Press again. They all are. So, third volume is again paper. Dostoevsky, The Stir of Liberation, 1860 to 65 by Joseph Frank. Princeton University Press, of course, and this is 1988. Then, and a hardback. We've got Dostoevsky, The Miraculous Years, 1865 to 1871 by Joseph Frank. This is the last one I've read. Uh, 
Princeton University Press, 1995. And then this last one that I've got to get to and finish, also hardback, is Dostoevsky, The Mantle of the Prophet, 1871 to 1881. Joseph Frank again, of course. And this one was uh, Princeton University Press, Princeton and Oxford, and this is 2002. By the time I get to, what was see, one, two, three, the fourth volume of the five. And I think this has been done in an abridged single volume. But the fourth volume of the five, I was done with Dostoevsky. The biography is brilliant. The man, I'm sure brilliant too, but just wears on you when you spend too much time with him. I have to admit, I don't, I don't think I would have really liked him <laughs> if I had met him. Uh, incredible xenophobe and a bit of a mess. But continuing the Dostoevsky theme, um, A Writer's Diary, Volume 1, 1873 to 1876, translated and annotated by Kenneth Lance with an introductory study by Gary Saul Morrison. It's Fyodor Dostoevsky again. And then... Uh, Volume two of the same thing, um, right here. So the first one was printed in, so they're both paper. They're both Northwestern University Press, Evanston, Illinois. So 1994, uh, did I do that right? I lost the page real quick there. Yeah, 94 on the first one and 94 on the second one. And then continuing the theme, uh, Fyodor Dostoevsky, The Brothers Karamazov, Every Man's Library, Knopf. And this is uh, translated from the Russian by Richard Prevere and Larisa Velikonsky, uh, introduced by Malcolm V. Jones, Every Man's Library, Alfred Knopf, New York. And this is the fifth printing of 92. Then one of these Norton Critical Editions, which I love, if you can find them, they're used in colleges a lot, so you sometimes I find them they'll be in rough shape, but if um, you can find one in nice condition, they're great because of all the critical apparatus. So Notes from the Underground, Fyodor Dostoevsky, translated and edited by Michael R. Katz, a Norton Critical Edition, second edition. And... Uh, this is W.W. Norton and Company, New York, uh, 2001 on this one. And here's an odd little volume you won't see around much. Um, I read about it somewhere and became interested in it. It's The Journeys of David Toback, From Innocence to Experience, From Tsarist Russia to America, as retold by his granddaughter, Carol Malkin. And this uh, is a shock in books, New York. And this is the uh, 1981 edition. So, uh, on Armistice Day, 1933, the anniversary of his daughter's suicide, David Toback, a kosher butching living on New York's Lower East Side, began to write in Yiddish his memories of coming of age and self-discovery in Tsarist Russia a half century earlier really enjoyed this book. Then, Maxim Gorky, Untimely Thoughts, Essays on Revolution, Culture, and the Bolsheviks, 1917-18. to 18. And this was um, Yale University Press, New Haven in London, uh, 1968. Uh, this is a 1995 edition. So it's with a new introduction in chronology by Mark D. Steinberg, translated from the Russian with notes by Herman Ermolyev. And then um, Gorky, My Apprenticeship in My Universities. And this one is uh, 
this is the Progress Soviet Authors Library. You see that right up there. Progress Publishers, Moscow. Translated from the Russian by Margaret Wetland. Illustrations by Merited Artists of the RSFSR, Boris Dekterev. Uh, printed in the Union of Soviet, Soviet Socialist Republic. Then we have a very famous book here, Big Old Bruiser, Quiet Flows the Dawn by Mikhail Shalikov. Edited by Brian Murphy. Translated by Robert Daglish. Revised and edited by Brian Murphy. Carol Graff Publishers Incorporated, New York. And this was um, 1996. Quiet Flows the Dawn is a panoramic view of 10 years of Cossack life on the Don region of Russia. Set in the turbulent years of the First World War, the Revolution, and the Civil War, it deals unblinkingly with the main questions confronting the war's communist regime. How much ruthlessness can be practiced in order to establish Soviet power? Then we're going to finish up with two volumes uh, that I heard about when I was studying archaeology. And the first one is The Keeper of Antiquities by Yuri Dombrovsky. And there's Yuri right there. Translated from the Russian by uh, Michael Glennie, McGraw-Hill Book Company, New York, Toronto. And this translation from 1969 is the first edition. Uh, Yuri Dombrovsky writes with great delicacy and skill about the feel of quality of life in rural Russia in the late 30s. Um, those angst-ridden years of suspicion and uncertainty preceding World War II. The narrator is the keeper of antiquities of the title in charge of the archaeological section of a provincial museum in the Soviet uh, Central Asia. A dedicated scholar, he is impatient and hostile towards attempts on the part of the local officials to vulgar vulgarize, simplify, and suppress the message of the past. His uncompromising attitude involves him in a series of episodes which render a picture of Soviet society dominated by fear and, and by mistrust of all the shadows of the civilizations that preceded it. Dombrovsky subtly points out the harrowing effects of an ideology when it is used as a weapon in private reprisals against ordinary innocent citizens. So, um, now I tried, I found that and that was years ago. I ran into this, which the title, I love the title, The Faculty of Useless Knowledge by Yuri Dombrovsky. And this is um, translated from the Russian by Alan Myers, the Haverhill Press, London. And this came out in 1978. Um, on a sunny day in 1937, the year that was to become known in, in Russia as the Year of Terror, a group of archaeologists around a trestle table in a mountain clearing in the Central Asian Republic of Kazakhstan Discuss fragments of a newly discovered gold diadem. On the same day, Polina Yurevna, the love of archaeologist Georgi Zybin's life, rings him after a silence of three years. So, another novel um, by someone I really enjoy. So that is the one, two, three, fourth bookshelf of the tenth bookcase. Thank you, BookTube.